Now, a couple of weeks ago, Lifeline experienced record numbers when it came to help. I'm wondering how that's going and if you've unfortunately broken those numbers again. G'day. Yeah, look, we're very, very close to breaking those numbers again. To give you an idea of the scale of the number of calls we're getting, two years ago we were getting 2,400 calls a day. Now we're getting an average of 3,300 calls a day. And as you indicated just a few weeks ago, we set an all-time record, if I can use that phrase, with 3,425 calls. So our calls are way up, they continue to be way up, and they reflect really the level of lockdown in COVID around the country and the level of despair and depression yeah. that that brings. So, so, so you're anticipating that it, that it will get worse and, and perhaps for some time, John? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, what we're seeing, Pete, is an enormous number of people who are doing it very tough. There is a bit of silver lining to this cloud, and that is that if people are reaching out, they're not suffering in silence. So it's not all bad news, but of course it does demonstrate despair. And one of the emotions we're seeing this year that we didn't see in the lockdowns last year is anger. People are angry. Uh, bearing in mind we had things like JobKeeper last year. Mm. That's not around this year, so people are struggling to put food on the table in some cases. In Western Sydney, where this uh, outbreak struck hardest earliest, it is a low-income area. There's no doubt about that. So people uh, weren't flush with cash in the first place. So people are doing it tough and people are worried about very simple things, putting food on the table and paying rent. So you've got everything from very simple concerns right through to people who are very worried that their business won't make it through a second lockdown. You know, they scraped through last time, they just won't make it through on a second time. So there's enormous concern and it's very human concern. And uh, people need to understand that they don't need to suffer in silence and they should reach out and get help. Right now, in these extraordinary circumstances, we're seeing vision of the, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force on the streets. Now, that's an extraordinary circumstance in Australia. It's only happening because of the COVID crisis. That's getting worse across the country with this Delta strain. People are worried about their health. People are seeing people dying again. Uh, young people, old people, everything in between. So you can understand the anxiety. And how much of that has to do too with, with mixed messaging from governments at state level and federal level, John? Is there concerns about that? We are allowed to do this, then we're not allowed to do this, and perhaps also a question of where the hope is because there's no, there's no end date to all of this. Yeah, spot on. You're absolutely right. And as human beings, we want certainty. We want to know what's happening tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. Yeah. Many people plan out their lives. You know, maybe you're retiring next year. Maybe you're buying a house next year. All these things are very important for you. And we haven't got any certainty at the moment. In fact, probably the only certainty we've got, which will drive up our calls and drive up people's anxiety and depression, is that things are going to get worse before they get better. Governments are being honest, so we should be grateful for that. But there is a heavy and negative message that's flowing out. So, yes, people are confused that the rules keep changing. Um, many, many people are doing it OK. You know, life's OK. But do they wish they could get out and do a bit more? If you like, mm. my wife and me, you've got your first HSC student. And, you know, he's had two years of disruption. Lockdowns last year, lockdowns this year. He starts his trials tomorrow. So, you know, there, there are people like us who are doing OK, but we're really concerned about our Year 12 son. So... It spreads very far and wide, very far yeah. and wide. And people are, we're seeing people are getting more concerned, more anxious, more angry, more depressed. Thank goodness they're reaching out to get help. Please keep doing that. We can take your calls at Lifeline, reach out to your GP, whatever you need, friends and family. Please don't suffer in silence. But yes, it looks, without a doubt, that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Just give me an idea of how many calls you're getting a day right across the nation and, and where are the hotspots? You might have just mentioned New South Wales, but just we talked about records being broken a couple of weeks ago, but what, what is the level today right now? Uh, well, I'll give you yesterday's figures. I'll yeah. give you uh, the, the live figures that I can give you. Um, just uh, so to give you an example, um, on Sunday we did 3,000 231 calls. Um, now, as I said, 12 months, uh, two years ago, we were doing 2,400 calls. Here's another fascinating statistic, Peter, and one we shouldn't forget. So on that same day, we got 366 telephone calls from people affected by bushfires over 18 months ago. 
So we are still getting between two and 400 calls a day from people who were affected by the bushfires of the 2019-2020 summer because their trauma comes at different times. Maybe they're also affected by COVID. Um, you know, the, the, their business um, can't reopen or can't get any customers because they can't get tourists in. So, you know, this also means that once the COVID physical um, pandemic is over, to the extent it will ever be over, the mental health pandemic will go on for some time. There's a vaccine. There are many vaccines that appear for COVID, but there's no vaccine for mental health. And we strongly believe that this will continue for some years to come, just as it is for the poor buggers who lived through that incredible bushfire 18 months ago. They need to know they're not forgotten. They're not forgotten by all of us, and Lifeline's still there for them as well. But it's just a reality that we are getting some of the biggest calls in the history of Lifeline, um, over 40% up from where we were just two years ago, and there's absolutely no relief inside in terms of those numbers. But that should not discourage anybody from calling and getting help. We've got the staff, we've got the volunteers to take your calls and get you through this yeah. difficult period. And it is great work that you do, that Lifeline does great and important work and uh, you're very busy at the moment. John Brogdon, appreciate your time. Thanks for giving us an update. We'll talk to you Thanks, soon. mate.